Gig Gab, the Working Musicians Podcast, episode 163 for Monday, April 30th, 2018. folks and welcome to gig gab the podcast by for and about working musicians our sponsors for today include a new sponsor for us here's simple contacts we're at simplecontacts.com coupon code gig gab saves you 30 bucks off your first order i have got a story to tell you folks about this in a minute but first here <laughs> in durham new hampshire i'm dave hamilton here in las gatas california it's paul kent how you doing mr kent I'm doing pretty good, man. I had a weekend off, and uh, but I got a big week ahead of me. So, um, you know, the music, uh, the, the rhythm of life is just flowing and flowing and flowing. A lot of rehearsals and a big show coming up this Saturday. How about you? Uh, yeah, I've had I've had a couple things going on. We've got a big um, fling original night that we've been organizing with a couple other bands that's happening on Saturday night. And then uh, and then I've got a monkey fist gig on Friday night coming up. And I didn't think I would have any gigs this past weekend, but um, I got a call from Amanda. It was, must have been Thursday that, uh, you know, she asked me if I could play outdoor on the deck of this place called the Gaslight in Portsmouth, where I have played a bunch. And uh, it was an afternoon thing and the weather was supposed to be perfect. And it turned out it was. So it was like the first nice spring day. And uh, so I did that with her and, and a bass player. It was actually just booked to be acoustic, but she's like, man, there's going to be a lot of people there. You know, bring your drums. Let's rock this out. And I was like, all right, she's cool. really good. She's really good. Yeah. And, you know, it. Um, there's so I have so much to talk about from that gig, but it's such a pleasure playing with a lead singer that's that that actually fills that role of of lead singer, not just someone that, that can sing. Right. But but someone that can be a front person. Um, it, I find that, um, that it really, um, it allows me just to focus on like playing and singing harmonies and like doing what I need to do, but I, I don't have to worry about running the show. Right. I mean, you know, we have conversations and she'll say, what do you think? What song do you think is next? And that kind of thing. But, but, you know, she's definitely in charge. Everybody in the room knows she's in charge. She has the the charisma and the the stage presence. I mean, she, you know, she comes from the theater world, so she's well trained in that regard. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that. But that's important. Classically trained. Classically trained. Yeah. And she has a lot of experience doing it. And, and it comes naturally to her, um, and, and, which is great. You know, it it really it's a pleasure being being on stage and just knowing that. Even if you have no idea what's going to happen next, that there's somebody that's that's got the reins and isn't going to give them up. Even if you try to take them, uh, you know, I mean, like not that I would, but, you know, she like she's in in control of the gig. It's her gig. And uh, and it's, it's in, in her name. Right. It's Correct. come see Amanda. It's not there's no band to this. Right. Yeah. Sometimes it's called the Amanda Dane band. But I mean, it's definitely her, her gig. name. Yeah, it's her gig. Yeah. 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 Good. So, yeah, it's nice to I, I really enjoy that. You know, I um, with fling, it it's definitely, you know, more of far more of a group effort. And if anything, you know, uh, I become the, the front person with monkey fist. John's definitely the point man, but it's not um, it's not fully that way. But um, but, you know, I've been in bands before. Uh, certainly the bands uh, that I was in, in, in high school and college, we had, uh, lead singers and especially my friend, Jeff Stebla, who was the lead singer, go figure really just stellar, stellar front man, engaging persona understood that role. Y you know what I mean? Like, like it is a role. It's, yeah. it's a re very real thing that, that unfortunately a lot of bands don't have. I mean, not only do they not have it because the band is by by definition, you know, spread out in terms of, you know, who gets the spotlight, sure. but just, just because nobody's comfortable in that role. So, you know, when you well, have someone skill. like that, yeah, it is a skill and it is, it's also, it's, uh, it's part natural and part developed because there's a, there, there's a thing to it. There's a thing to timing the audience, extracting emotion, extracting applause, extracting encores. Yep. I mean, there's a thing to it when you're not, 
playing an arena where, where things like lighting and background music and, you know, yes. and other things, you know, guide the audience to the thing that's supposed to happen. So it is, it's, you know, there's a natural thing to having a rapport with an audience and being comfortable. Yes. A natural thing to generating energy, energy. through yeah. the music, but there's also a very, um, uh, a very learned thing towards kind of the, you know, certain things that need to happen during a gig that, you know, introducing a band, you yeah. know, um, you know, getting an audience to participate with something. You know, there's, well, there's certain it. things that you learn through re repetition. That's right. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago, I actually went to see. Uh, and Joe. being a good student of it, seeing what and, other people do. And, that and, well, that's it. Yeah. I went to see, I don't even know if we talked about this. I went to, went to see Joe Perry uh, and it was sort of a cast of, of Boston musician all-stars, right? Barry Goudreau's band opened up the night. He's the guitar player from Boston. Uh, Where was the gig? It was at the Hampton Casino Ballroom place. Yeah, the yeah. Ne next, right next to the place you play a lot, right? Yeah, exactly. Yep. And uh, and and so Barry Goudreau's band opened. They were fantastic. In fact, um, I would I would seek them out and go see them again. They uh, they played a lot of. It, it's essentially RTZ, right? Which was uh, Barry's band that he formed after he was sort of ousted from Boston. I don't know the whole story, but it seems like he was ousted. Um, and uh, Brian Mays was the keyboard player in that band. And Brad Delp sang in that band for a while. Uh, Brian Mays now takes the, the most of the lead vocals. And there's a, a few singers, female singers that, that, you know, sing both harmonies and leads, especially on some of those Boston tunes. And that's the thing. They cover a lot of those Boston tunes or play a lot of, I don't know if we call it covers or plays, right? I mean, Barry wrote a lot of them. And so I don't, you know, but great band, really well rehearsed and played really well. Um, Charlie Farron opened the night on, on acoustic guitar. He was in that band Fahrenheit that was, that played in and around Boston and had, you know, a lot of those same people in it. And then Joe Perry played Brad Whitford, uh, also from Aerosmith was on stage wow. with him. Yep. And, uh, and his singer uh, is Gary Sharon. So, uh, you know, see, it, it had been a while since I'd seen Gary on stage. And uh, I've obviously, as I mentioned on the show, had the pleasure of, of playing with him uh, a little bit. And it was, our seats were sort of, the, that place is weird, but, but anyway, our seats were, were off sort of to the side. We had a, a not a side view of the stage, but, but definitely a view of the side of the stage. And um, and it was really interesting. You know, my wife had never seen Gary perform before. I don't know how that ever happened, but uh, but she hadn't. So that's sort of part of why we went. And, it, you know, it was really interesting seeing him, you know, when he was facing the crowd versus when he was standing on the drum riser, you know, kind of facing the drummer, which is what he does to sort of take a break from being, you know, Mr. Frontman, you know, on all the time. Then it's just interesting to see him kind of make those looks back at the drummer like, hey, how you doing? You know, gigs going well, you know, meanwhile, with his with his hands, he's like making these motions or whatever that that are engaging and entertaining. But his face definitely changes, you know, when he when he turns back and forth to the crowd. It's it's it, he's a he's a. Not only is he a master of his craft, like you said, he is very clearly a student of his craft um, and, and also happens to have a fantastic voice. <laughs> helps. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Helps, helps when you're largely not getting over the I, I wonder if they like, you know, yeah. what I'm doing thing. Right. Yeah. If you can set that aside. I mean, I suppose everybody has that to some degree, even yeah. the most accomplished of, of, uh, of technicians. But, you know, if you are very much locked in that you can deliver the goods technically. Mm -hmm. It really makes the other stuff <laughs> kind easier. of clears the path. Yeah. yeah. I, and I, I mean, having had conversations with him, I know that he's always like wondering, are people enjoying this? You know, what can I do better? And that sort of thing. But you would never know that watching him on stage. And that's the point, right? You, 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 that's can, the be point. A, you can be a student of something. Don't communicate that you are, that, that you might in a moment feel as though you don't have the skills to do the thing that you're doing, right? No one, I, I always say when you go to see a band um, or when you're, well, when you go to see a band or wait, when you are the band that people are coming to see, everybody's rooting for your success, right? It, it's, it's very rare that somebody's in the room, like wishing for you to fail. Um, and even if you stumble a little, like think about it, when you see a band have a little bit of a train wreck, like your 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 instant wish, or at least mine, isn't to see the train wreck get worse. It's like, oh, can they recover? You know, like everybody's rooting for your success. And and you just need to remember that. 
because, you know, makes it easier. And it's also true. But even if it's it not true. true, it just makes it easier. So definitely. Yeah. Um, the, the cool part about uh, one cool part about this, this gig I did this weekend was, uh, you know, it was a pickup gig. I've played with Amanda a bunch, but she said, oh, there's going to be this bass player, Joe Harding, uh, on the gig. And I was like, okay, fine. You know, whatever. I'm sure he knows the tunes or doesn't. And he'll follow along like we always do. Cause she was, she's always like mixing up. Wait, wait, let me pause you here. So. Amanda has a a song list that you are familiar with, and it's the same song list when you do a duo gig with her. She has, you know, these are my 50, 70, 90, 130 songs. Is that the premise of this of how these pickup gigs work with her? Yes, except the, the, the every gig I've done, there's at least, you know, three to 10 songs that we'll play that I've never played with her before. That so, are, she's reacting to requests or she's just calling a song? Uh, sometimes it'll be like on the way to the gig, I'll get a text from her. Morning of the gig, I'll get a text from her. Hey, do you know, like like on Saturday, it was, do you know Chicken Fried by the Zach Brown Band? I'm like, yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah, I know that tune. She's like, okay, yeah, I've been trying to kind of work it up. She says, how well do you know the form? I said, well, actually, I really know the form on that one. She's like, okay, great. She's like, I don't really know the form that well, but I, I know if you drive it, it'll work fine. It's like, okay, cool. And then that's it. Then the next time we we think about that song is when we're in the midst of the set and she's like, ready for chicken fried? And it's like, sure, mm-hmm. let's go. Um, so, so yeah. And Joe had played a bunch of gigs with her last year that I, I it, it just, we were playing with her at the same time. It just, we never crossed paths. And uh, so, you know, I knew he was going to be in mostly the same boat that I was, you know, he, there were going to be some tunes he had played that, that I hadn't and vice versa. And, you know, so we started and I mean, we, you know, we set up, we said hello to each other like you do or whatever, you know, get the logistics laid out. And it's like, all right, downbeat, let's go. And man, like three notes into the gig, <laughs> it was like, oh, you're my kind of bass player. Like he definitely came from that whole like, you know, Jocko, Victor Wooten, Stevie Wonder school of thinking in 16th notes and really laying down a groove and driving the tempo. Very similar it, it, to, uh, to Steve and your band wow. in, in that sense. Um, di- slightly different tone for both of those guys. Like I could, I could yeah. make a list of things that are different about them, but, but in terms of the groove and how easy it was for us, for both of us to just like, you know, halfway through the set, I'm like, this going, this is great, man. And he's like, Hey, yeah, you're easy to play with him. Like, well, same, you know, it's like this goes both ways. That's uh, cool. Yeah. So it was I, really I, I was thinking the other day about yeah. it. the number of number of people I've come across, like I, I get constantly, Hey, if you ever need a sub, right. People coming sure. up. Yep. And, but what I've actually found is the number of people who think they can walk in and just be a sub, is a lot like the people who consider themselves pros or even semi-professionals. And again, we've had this conversation about what a pro is, right? Sure. Yeah. But um, I'm amazed at the people who are willing to say, Hey, if you ever need a sub, you know, like thinking they could walk in, especially to my band, which, you know, has got a lot of, you really have to be on your toes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. You know, firsthand, I, I but I'm, yeah. I, I'm, a, you know, there are people out there who are, who are that good. Their ears are that big. They're musical dictionary their knowledge well they're 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 in break you know kind of rock and roll fake book stuff is really good um there are people out there but i would say most of the people who think they can do that are, are cannot do that yeah yeah and it, and that's why i would say if you're you know if you're in a position where you need to hire somebody or bring somebody aboard like that you you, you want to get as you're going to want to get a reference on them from someone you trust as opposed to them saying, no, trust me, I can do Truth. it. It's like, yeah. I mean, maybe, you know, like, I mean, you also got to trust your gut, but because uh, there are people out there, plenty of people that can do this. You just don't know if they, you know, the problem is the people that can't do this sometimes aren't self-aware enough about that. And often. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't think Not- people are lying when they say I'm your man, you know, for that gig, but. Sometimes you get in the middle of the gig and you realize that. Oh, I see what you're saying. So, so the, so the distinction you're making is that most of the people who say, Hey, if you ever need a sub, they truly believe in their heart that they could be that sub. Totally. Yeah. But I would think one time being exposed and just like, you know, 
bouncing your way through a gig and you know, do you think most people would come out of something like that saying, Hey, that went pretty well, not understanding that their job was not to let it go pretty well, right. but to make it go as well as if, you know, as make if it, the regular guy was there. That's right. Yeah. I, I don't like I, you and I are pretty self-aware cats. I like to think I, but I say that knowing that there are things about myself that, that, uh, you know, I'm blind to, uh, but in that sense, musically, I, I think I know where my limits are and, and aren't, mm. but some people just, you know, some people have different perspective. There's a whole different perspective on, I mean, you know, this, right. You, you watch a video back of your show or whatever. It's like, Whoa, that's way different <laughs> than I thought it was. Right. It's yeah, like, for sure. Oh, okay. And, and just being aware that that's possible, right. That, that how you thought it went on stage may yeah. or may not be how it appeared out there better or worse. Right. Sometimes you'd like, Oh, this is a disaster. It's a disaster. And people are like, Whoa, you know, like, okay, cool. Yep. Great. So yeah, I think, I think there's, there's that, um, for sure. But, um, but yeah, with this guy, man, it was like, I, there were tunes I knew, I, I I think that he was less familiar with her material than I was. But she and I have done a lot of duos together. You know, I know where her cuts are and things she like plays that. guitar, right? She does. Yeah. yeah. And, and she doesn't really play like rock and roll fake book stuff. I mean, some of that, but a lot of it's just, you know, more of that kind of female singer songwriter stuff that, that, I've never really encountered before. So it's mm -hmm. the, a lot of the gigs I've done with her. It's like, you know, especially the first few, I was following her intently for 90% of the material. Cause it was literally the first time I had heard most of these songs in my life, let alone played them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I realized the bass player was, was um, I think he was slightly less familiar with her stuff than me, but most of the time, like if it was like, oh, there's a cut coming up, you know, I could just do like a little roll on the snare drum to lead into that cut. And man, he caught it every single mm. time. There was one point we, the way we end uh, play Michael Jackson's beat it and uh, um, not beat it. Why do I, why did I say that? Uh, Billy Jean. Sorry. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and when she and I do it, we always stop before the kind of the, we do the, the, we say that we sing the outro four times and we stop before the last one and sing an acapella. I'm like, I don't know if he's going to catch this. So I just tapped him with my drumstick and he looked at me and I, you know, stopped it and it was fine. But um, I'm not even convinced I needed to do that. I think he probably would have caught it. You know, he just had big ears and, and, and uh, it was great. Really, truly a pleasure getting to That's cool. show up at a gig. And I, you know, I like that. I, I like that spontaneity in the moment. Sometimes it does, it doesn't go as well as it could. And sometimes it goes way better than you would expect. And so that's, you know, it's nice when that, uh, when that happens. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I, you, you know, it, it, that gives me another idea um, because, you know, here we are talking about musicians and, be, like you said, being able to deliver like you're the person that would be the, you know, is always playing that music. You can't make it look like it's a pickup gig. You can't make it look like you're a sub. And um, and and you you need to be able to do that. But sometimes you get really lucky because you can play music that matters to you. Oh, yeah. And, and I, 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 I think there's a conversation to be said here before we get lost in that conversation, though. I want to tell everybody about our sponsor here. Does that work for you, Paul? Please do. Yeah, Sweet. go for it. So as I said at the beginning of the episode, our sponsor is Simple Contacts. We're at simplecontacts.com slash gig gab, G-I-G-G-A-B. You get 30 bucks off of these gr this great service for getting you contact lenses. I, you know, here's the thing. Um a lot of times you don't want to wear your glasses on stage, right? Because, you know, they re the lights reflect or whatever, or maybe there's a vanity thing going on. Um, I don't wear my glasses on stage. I don't like to. But when I'm sweaty after loading all my stuff in the car and I get in the car to drive home, I put my glasses on and they fog up. And so I can't wear my glasses for the drive home. So contacts, you know, solve this problem for you. You can see the crowd. You can see all that stuff. And, uh, and so, you know, but you need to find a service where contact lenses are going to come to you and be delivered. And I like services like, like simple contacts that kind of change the game on this. So what they do is 
save you a ton of time. So you, you have to already be, you know, wearing context. And then what you do is you visit simplecontext.com slash gig gab. And then uh, you can also use coupon code gig gab at checkout that gets you 30 bucks off. But the way it works is you go and you put in your prescription and then you use your phone or your computer to test your vision. They confirm your prescription right there and they do a vision test for you for only 20 bucks. Versus it's pretty cool. I, I, I ran through the test when we were talking about them. Yeah. It's pretty sci-fi stuff. I mean, it's so easy and it's so simple. It's really cool. Yeah, I did it with my wife because she wears contacts. And she was like, dude, this is super easy. And then, and then you know, you, you go through it and a, a doctor, um, you know, reviews it all. Now, this isn't a replacement for your periodic full eye health exam, right? This is just to confirm your vision so that you can get these, these contacts. Uh, and then you you order the contacts. But the, what we did was we just scanned the barcode on her contact lens box. And and then, it you know, it said, OK, here's what you need. We filled out like our address and and put in the, you know, the, the order information or whatever. And of course, we put in our coupon code gig gab, G-I-G, G-A-B. And then a couple of days later, the contact showed up. And the thing that shocked my wife was she's like, these are the contacts I wear. And I said, well, yeah. She said, well, I just figured with these prices, it was going to be like some, you know, generic version that was the same. I'm like, no, no, no. These are the contacts you wear. And it really, it, it blew her away knowing what, uh, what contacts cost and all that stuff. And it's just super easy. The vision test takes only five, less than five minutes, really. And uh, saves you a ton of time versus having to go to the eye doctor and all that stuff. So you got to yeah. check it out. Go to Simple Contacts, S-I-M-P-L-E-C-O-N-T-A-C-T-S dot com. Simple Contacts dot com slash gig gab, G-I-G-G-A-B. That's how they know we sent you. Uh, and or enter coupon code gig gab at checkout. That saves you 30 bucks off your first order of contacts there. Our thanks to Simple Contacts. Coupon code GigGab for sponsoring this episode. Thank All you. Right. Cool. So, you know, coming back to this, Paul, um, this idea that that it's great to play music that you love. And, and I think that can take on a lot of different forms. Like, yeah, I mean, I've always enjoyed playing these songs with Amanda. Right. But playing them with this bass player where he and I, you know, it definitely made th things were way funkier than they've ever been. And it was just because that's how he and I both thought. And as soon as, as soon as we sort of heard each other playing that way, it was like, you know, we were off to the races. Um, yeah. But you know, it, it's, um, I, and I think that I, I, I hate to say it. I, you know, it translates to the crowd. It shouldn't, right. It, it, I should be sitting here saying every time you play, no matter what you're playing, it, it should come off just as enthusiastic and just as energetic and all of that stuff. But the reality is there's a there's another level of this, right? That when you're truly enjoying and resonating with what you're playing, either because it's a song you love or a style you love or musicians that you you know, that you love to play with, whatever it is like that comes across. And so I'm feeling that right now, Dave. That. So yeah, okay, without a doubt. So I'm I'm in the middle of you know my big Springsteen show is on Saturday night, and I put together this band of you know some people I know, um, some people I know well. You know I have a couple of house rockers in it, um, and a couple of people I just wanted to play with, and so there's a mix. And here's the thing: they're all great players. You know they're all good at, at their craft. Sure. Um, but I'm really really loving what my drummer who was the ex drummer for the house rockers Joe is doing because oh, yeah. him and I have a unique affinity for this music. We, it is, it is in our DNA. Now Joe is a big Beatles fan and a big stones fan, but I am just, I'm, I'm keenly aware of what happens when, when you're playing the music, that is the most important thing in the world to you happens. I mean, you, you like, like what you experience with this bass player, you can lock in with other musicians and, and do something meaningful and express some joy of the, you know, the, the, just the joy of locking in with another musician and creating great music. There's, there's a truth and a, and a reality that comes out of that, that is genuine and people definitely react to. Yeah. But I think, and, and I, I think often, you know, jazz players, kind of live in this world altogether the quest of finding those magic you know combinations sinks. yeah yeah of yeah. people with this passion for an art form like you said you know you can do a whole genre of music um 
you know, Joe and I are both big Bruce fans and I'm watching Joe, Joe, I played with for 15 years in the house rockers and he played everything we put in front of him. You know, he played funk and he played, you know, tower power and, you know, all this type of stuff, all, you know, very successfully, but that thing that happens when it is the song or the artist or the, you know, what it's extracting from you, you're pulling from memories and meanings and, you know, you're channeling all that. So you're playing to me again. And, and I don't know, I, I'm going to assume some of this has to do with not being a trained musician, you know, not being a schooled musician to a great degree. I, I, um, emotion is the thing that I go to and the things that, that, that stoke emotion with me are the things that get me playing the best, get me performing the best and, you know, get me doing a lot of things the best, but, you know, I, I also have like great, truly trained musicians and you can tell that their perspective on music is um, they balance the emotional with the intellectual. Does that make sense? It, it does. Yeah. Yeah. I, but I won't, I would, well, I mean, I can only speak for myself, but I would say that, you know, certainly I'm, I'm a trained musician. There are people that are trained far more than me. Uh, and, and I definitely can get into that, you know, headspace where I'm solving math problems behind the drum set. Right. You know, where it's like, <laughs> well, I mean, that's what I call it. Right. Sometimes like I find myself in those, like, especially some of these theater shows where the, the music's really complex. It's like, well, okay. Like this is, this is interesting, but not necessarily like joyful in that it's like, yep, I can sit down and I can do this really hard thing and make it work and feel successful at that. But sure. it's very different than, say, when I, you know, I, and, and and even even to a lesser degree, you know, all these madhouses that we do um, by and large, the music is Often stuff that I've heard, sometimes it's not stuff that I'm familiar with at all, but often that I've heard, but I don't really care one way or another about it. It's like, okay, cool. It's a song to play. And I play it with people and working with people that I like, and it's actually great fun. But it's, it was different when we did the Madhouse that was all Beatles music, right? Where not only was I playing music that I really love, but I also knew it. And and that makes the gig even easier, right? When you know you. Yeah, Beatles in. seems to be the one, the kind of the, the the foundational common denominator that that you can find people that can cons can vibe on that. I, that's what in rock and roll music, at least. Don't one, you agree? One would think yes, although um, without naming any names, I've had um, some rough experiences with that lately, but that's okay. Not, not necessarily very lately, but you know, yeah. Where you assume people would know Beatles music and they don't, but um, even though they're hired to play it, but that's okay. Uh, yeah. But you're right. In general, the Beatles uh, certainly form that um, it's a magical sort of mix for, for most people. And you're, so, you, you just moved, didn't you? Cause now it sounds like you're in an echo chamber. I'm, yeah, I'm moving back. Hang <laughs> no, with me. it's fine. It's fine. I just, Hang with me. I just figured I'd acknowledge that for our listeners so that they didn't <laughs> think that, that they were going crazy. So I know that you move around uh, to because I think you're still trying to stretch your back out and keep that going. Exactly. The show. Yeah, exactly. it's all fine. It's all fine. I just wanted to acknowledge it. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, you know, it's different. Um, when, when it's music and I think that it's two parts of it, right? One, you, you play it differently because you love it and, and it's the stuff that you would choose to listen to sometimes versus just doing it for a job, you know, but the other part is, you know, it so well, right? Because you love it. Now there's a, there's a whole different comfort level that you can use when you, you know, that, that you have when you're playing it, you're not worried. Oh, how does this part go on every song? You're like, no, I know these tunes, you know, it's fine. And I, I think that's that the, there's, you know, the, that's going on both with you and with Joe for this Springsteen well, thing, I would assume. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. And especially, you know, I'm, it's going to be about 30 songs total. Um, and it's amazing to me reflecting on, like I didn't realize I knew the words to all these songs that that well. I mean, there's a couple of tweaks or things that that are stuck in your head that I actually learned wrong sure. or heard wrong or repeated wrong. But um, yeah, that means the, that means you're playing "Blinded by the Light." No. <laughs> uh, I have played that in the past. A lot of words there. Yeah, but yeah. Um, but yeah, that 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 
realization that you are truly just emoting, right? You're not thinking. And it, I'm not even talking about it like being well rehearsed. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about, I'm talking about the musical dictionary that is, has become part of who you are. Right. Just letting that stuff come out. And then the feeling uh, as you're feeling this, and again, it's different than like, Oh, that's a cool song. Let's learn that. And let's play it. And you know it really well. And you can even reflect on the meaning of the words as you're emoting, you know, the uh, singing it, that that's, that's certainly a cool thing, but I'm saying pick, pick the songs that, that changed your life that, you know, you don't have to look at again there. You know, these songs. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. So yep. for you to play it is really, is a, is a really amazing thing when you're backed by other people, who are doing the same thing. That's an unbelievable feeling. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I wonder, you know, like in, a, in original bands. So obviously the, the guy who writes the songs, that song is going to mean a certain thing to them. I wonder, like I've never been in an original band. I wonder what that's like for a drummer. If you, you haven't written the song or a bass player to kind of catch the vibe, you know, develop the interpretation of the vibe, you know, you know, you play an original band. I'm sure there's songs yeah. that you don't like playing sometimes. Right. There, so, there were, you know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've done that. Right. You know, in the band I was in in college uh, that I mentioned earlier, go figure. We were, you know, we played some covers, but we were an original band. You know, the, the, the covers were just sort of uh, things to, to really, they were vanity songs for us. It was like, Oh, wouldn't it be cool to play that song? It's like, yeah, sure. Why not? Let's play it. No problem. You know, but, um, and there, there were, in fact, I can think of one song that I always, like, I hated the song. Um, I hated the way it sounded. It was a <laughs> stupid song. The name of the song was China Buddha, <laughs> fat man, China Buddha, fat man. And, uh, it was, it was the stupidest song. And, uh, but, the crowd loved it and and the band knew that I hated it, but I, it was also like, you know, I also knew that that it was one of our songs and way better. Is hate, is hate a strong word for this? Yeah, it might be too strong, but I, I really dislike this tune. Like if there was anything else to play, it would be like, let's just play this. Let's not play China Buddha tonight, guys. Come on. You know, but um, but, you know, it, it was better than playing somebody else's tune. Right. It, at least this was ours. And it was like the crowd loved it. And so, I mean, I got to the point where it was like, yeah, whatever. We, we have to play it every gig. It's like one of our most popular songs. You know, it's requested all the time. This is freaking amazing that people come out to see our band and sing our lyrics. Our songs. Yeah. yeah. Like that. You, you know, you can get over that really quickly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but success, but, success cures a lot of things. Well, it? and, and just feedback cures th those things, right? Seeing that joy in somebody else's eyes. It's like, well, okay, there's 200 people here that are singing all these lyrics. I'm the one guy that doesn't like this song. I I'm pretty sure I'm the least important one in that particular vote, you know? Um, but it, it th there, um, I mean, it, there, there were, Two songs that I wrote with Go Figure, um, one of which did fairly well on on college radio. But uh, but I'm not really a songwriter. I wrote a song out of frustration. Um, I was like, wow, we need a song like this. So uh, let's just like barf this out. And it was like, oh, actually, that was a pretty good song. Uh, maybe I should try that again. But I, I want to go out on not top, but, you know, with moderate success. So we'll just stay right where you are. <laughs> um, but uh, but the rest of the tunes were not written by me at, at all, not in any way whatsoever. It was mainly uh, two guys in the band that that wrote the songs. And, and 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 then when one of those guys left, it was really just just Jeff. And it but there was there's a difference between I wrote the song and then I arranged it. You know, and and that that's where I mean, if you step into an original band, like I did say with Hypnotic Clambake, where I was stepping into an existing catalog that needed to be played basically with the same vibe that, you know, they were recorded and written with. That was very different than being part of the the crafting of these tunes yeah. like in Go Figure and in Fling, where, you know, you're there, you're arranging it. And and maybe adding harmonies or, you know, like there's a lot of discussion that happens between, hey, look at this cool thing I, I wrote and we're playing it for a crowd. Right. So so there's there is that level of ownership there um, at, at different levels. And, um, I, you know, so it's not it's, it. I mean, I've experienced it at, at 
in a variety of ways where it's like I'm playing cover songs that just happen to be written by the person with whom I'm playing them, as opposed to these are songs that that guy wrote that we are playing for you that are yeah. our songs. And so there's, there's a difference there, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Did that answer your question? It, I don't know. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it colored my question yeah. and I'll just say again, that thing, you know, there are, there are different levels of highs when you play music, there are yeah. different levels of joy and, you know, reward and, and, and that type of thing of with my background, again, you know, a guy who picked up the guitar again, you know, 20 years ago. Yeah. Definitely. It got in me and I had to do more and, you know, what turned into, Hey, let's get a little band together and, you know, just play in the garage every once in a while to, I need to do this of all the levels of joy. I, you know, I have a great band and, the the joy of being a part of a great team is really fun. I get a lot out of the solo, you know, where it's all on me to try and, you know, go over, you know, I get a lot of that. I have a great trio, you know, that is, you know, like going to music school every day, you know, with these amazing singers, I get joy on many levels from all those things. I think the greatest joy I feel is when I'm emoting the music that means the most to me and there's other people around me that that are on the train and whether if they're on the train because it's in their dna that's that's a bonus if they're on their train because and this is kind of one of the things i'm experiencing with this springsteen thing is that even though it's a bunch of very good musicians who are giving it their all i you know humbly i say they're giving it their all because they bought into this to do something for me which is rewarding on a whole nother level but i mean just to hear that someone listened closely enough to get that one riff that nobody really would know unless you really listen closely. Yeah. That all, all that stuff is just washing over me. So, you know, Saturday night to do this show, I, it, it, it's going to be one of the most emotional things that I've ever done and rewarding things and powerful things. And it, it all comes down to that thing. It's, it's the music that is so deep down in me, just being able to express it, get it out and hopefully connect, you know, and that, that would actually be the weird thing, you know, is like the build up in my mind to how awesome this is going to be. And, uh, you know, there in, in the crowd are going to be people who come see me do different things. There'll be some, you know, cause I've advertised it pretty well. So, you know, the, hopefully those, some people come in just cause they want to hear an evening of Springsteen music. You know, the question is, is can, can I, can I go over to, in my mind, the movie's playing and I'm, I'm crushing it. Right. <laughs> you know, I, I am owning this room and uh, you know, there is that, there is that risk that uh, you know, that's nice. Paul, obviously you're really into this. Yeah. And then you have to manage, you know, going back to our conversation about, you know, being a performer, what happens if the energy coming back from the audience is a little less than the movie I'm playing in my mind right now, how good a performer will I be able to be to kind of dig down and, you know, grab these people and, and make them go on this ride with me. That's, that's the trick, right? Yeah, that's the real trick. So, I, I mean, to put this, I, I don't want to say this the wrong way and like put the wrong, I mean, here we are dissecting this thing that you're about to do as opposed to <laughs> something you just did. So as your friend, I'm like, wow, this is really a bad time to do this, but yet here we are. So um, the, the question is, you know, it's it, in a sense, you're putting on an evening of vanity songs. Right. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it, it, in the sense that these are songs that you love. Now, the good news is that you're not alone right, in being a fan of Bruce Springsteen. Right. There there's there's a lot of people out there. So it's not like you're showing up and playing, say, a night of of original music that you just wrote this week and no one has heard before. Right. It, it chances are people are going to recognize uh, most, if not all of these tunes. So so there's that. But it is for you. Regardless of what it is for anyone else, it's it is for you a night of vanity music. And so, um, I, you know, the, the it, you know, thinking back to our conversation, I think it was last week. How soon after do you watch the videos? Mm. Uh, you know, like uh, to me, the more the gig meant to me. Either positively the more, the more time you need or negatively. Right. Like like the bigger the scar that it leaves. And again, scars can be good and bad. Uh, the longer I've learned that it's good for me to wait to watch these things. Um, so, uh, but you know, you know, Dave, this yeah. is the good stuff. I mean, this is, this yeah. is the, and this, you know, is all part of life, laying it on the line, taking risks, totally going for something you feel very passionate about. I mean, you know, that's it. 
uh, yeah. with a little bit of, with a little bit of experience and maturity, you recognize a little bit that the journey is the reward, right? Like, right. you know, I, I'm sure the, I'm sure it's going to go very, very well. I'm going to sure many people in the audience are going to really like it. Some of them are going to like it just to see me doing this thing. Some of them are going to like it because they genuinely like the music. And some people are going to be like, Oh, that was cool. It was a little over the top for me, but you know, <laughs> you know, and, and they'll yeah. be kind about it. Yes. Um, but, uh, what I'm focused on mostly is um, be the best me that I can be. Do do this music that means so much to me as yep. much justice as I can, and lay it all out there, and and you know let the let the chips fall where they may, so so to speak. And and in that is actually the reward. Well, and that you're right because that that is the reward, right? Is is taking a risk and and experiencing what it what what it is to take that risk, and absolutely laying it all out there. Like if you, if you walk off that stage, it doesn't matter whether people are, you know, screaming out of their seats, cheering or sitting there looking at their phones. Like if you walk off that stage and you say, ah, I could have done better or yeah, you know, I, I wasn't really feeling it tonight. Like that's regrets. That's yeah. the regret. Right. Exactly. That's it. You got to be like, man, I left it all out there. Look, there's where it is. Like, I don't have it with me. It's over there. That's when you, that's success to me. And, and that's palpable. That's what I'm going for. Like people, people, res, that, that's why the, you know, the people that you said, you know, some people that were like, oh, it's over the top, but they're still going to be kind about it. They're going to be kind about it because they saw you plan your ass off and land it all out there for them not also for you and for everybody else in the room but for them you know you're and that's the ultimate expression of being a front man right that's it well at any musician like you you should always lay it out there for everyone um even if you're not the one in, like you know actively engaging the crowd you gotta you know you gotta deliver every time you gotta play well you gotta you know remember that you're performing smile what was it uh, uh who was it chris isaac you know it said um all these people are paying, coming out to see me. The least I can do is put on a nice shirt. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but that's, there, there's something like it's all encapsulated in that statement, right? It's not just about how you, you know, what shirt you choose to wear. It's the intention of, whoa, you, like I have a responsibility to these people that I'm about to stand on stage in front of. Absolutely. That's they've given know. me their time. They've given me their money. They've given me their trust. Like a lot of things you can do on a Saturday night. Right. Yep. So what, what am I going to do? And I, I'll talk. I, I love to quote Bruce. You know, it's always about giving something that's more than what money can buy, regardless of what how much money was transacted. Right. Yeah. It's always about giving. That's our job is, you know, whether it's you're playing in a dance club. And, you know, you're giving people, you're taking people away. What can we do as musicians to give people more than what money can buy? Because otherwise, yeah. let's, you know, let's go, you know, build bird cages or something like that. Yeah. Well, they're getting like, like you said, and I think actually that it was interesting what, where you said they're giving us their, their time and their money and their, you know, like, I think that was actually the beginning of Chris Isaac's quote there was, was uh, related to time and money. And it's true, right? Th those people are, are giving you a couple of hours of their time. Um, that's, that's a responsibility right there. Definitely. And, and if you lose sight of that, that's, that's a, that's an indication that maybe it's time to like, stop and think about what you're doing. And it, is this the type of music I want to be playing or, you know, whatever, because I found myself in that scenario in the past, you know, where I, like I'll be in a band and members change to the point where it's like, Whoa, these aren't the people I signed up to play with. And, eh, you know, it's just not happening. Uh, wait a minute. If I don't, if I'm showing up at the gig and I'm not a little bit nervous, um, then I know uh, it's time for me to, you know, to, to go find something else to do. Like, yeah, I, I want to be sure. a little bit nervous, not debilitatingly so, but, you know, I want to care. Uh, yep. If I don't feel, if I don't feel myself care, it, then that's, that's like a big warning flag to me. Uh oh, time to go. Time to do something else. So yep. Not I'm not doing it for the money. I'd be happy to be in it for the money, but I, I'm not. So there you go. You know, <laughs> well, wish me luck this Saturday. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it everything I have. I know you will. That's the beauty of it. Um, I wish I could come see it. So I'll I'll watch the videos that people post. Um, right. <laughs> but uh, Whether you do or not, that's up to you. So there you go. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, folks. Well, that's what we got for today. I don't think we have anything else. Right. 
I'm good, man. Nothing. Thanks to our sponsor. Yeah, thanks to Simple Contacts at simplecontacts.com slash giggab, where coupon code giggab, that's G-I-G-G-A-B, saves you 30 bucks on your first order. Go check it out. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great week. Always be performing. I know I don't need to remind you of that, Paul. I'm going for it, man. That's it.